Welcome to another episode of Tips from the Swamp by Absolute Control Irrigation Specialists. Today we'll be showing you how to use a volt ohm meter to measure the resistance on an irrigation solenoid used in the industry to operate control valves or in some cases individual valves located at sprinkler heads on a golf course where they typically use a valve and head. For this demonstration I have two standard irrigation solenoids that I'm going to be using to hook up with my volt ohm meter. So I set my meter to read ohms resistance which is upside down U and then I connect the leads from one of the solenoids to that meter. You'll notice that with one solenoid I'm getting a 32.2 ohm reading. The other solenoid that I'm using has a slightly different resistance reading and it shows us at 25.7 ohms which also is a good reading. A typical solenoid will read anywhere from 25 ohms to 65 ohms depending upon the manufacturer. Now if I connect these two solenoids together in parallel as they would be on a golf course if you were running two heads at the same time on one zone you will find that the resistance reading drops to approximately somewhere in the range of half of the resistance reading of a single coil. This tells you that if you're doing this on the wire you'll find that this indicates that there are two solenoids on that wire. Now this can be done at each individual head testing the solenoids individually where you've disconnected them and you're connect checking with your meter on the two solenoid leads and that will tell you if that individual coil is good. If you reconnect it and there's another solenoid and sprinkler head attached to those same wires you can go to that head and again you can disconnect and check that coil. Otherwise if they're all hooked up you can go back to your satellite irrigation controller and locate the common wire which goes out to every solenoid connected to that particular timer, disconnect it from its output board so that we eliminate electronics from the circuits in the controller to affect our resistance reading, connect one of your probes to that common wire, then use your other probe and connect it to the zone that you're checking. If you hook up to it and you get a reading similar to this at 14.9 ohms, it's telling you that there are two solenoids on that particular zone, which actually is a good reading and it should be operating correctly. At the same time, if you connect up at the satellite and you get the 25.6 ohm reading, it says you're reading one coil which means if there's only one head or one valve on that zone it's reading correctly. Now what you can do is reconnect everything and turn the zone on and see if it turns on the control valve or the sprinkler head or heads that are involved. You know that your readings are correct on your coils, you also know that your coils are connected correctly back to the controller satellite because of these readings. Should you get a zero reading with, every, with everything hooked up in the field back at your satellite with the common disconnected and you still get a zero reading, that's telling you that you have a broken wire between that control unit and the sprinkler heads or control valve that you're dealing with. To solve this you need to get somebody who can locate and track your wire and then use a fault finder such as a 2003 pulser to follow that wire to wherever there is a fault in it which would typically be the break you're looking for. I hope this has been of assistance to you. Again, this is Tips from the Swamp 
by Absolute Control Irrigation Specialists, Incorporated. And you're welcome to look us up for further information on our website at absolute-control.com. Thank you and have a good day.